Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino back here, and I'm very excited to do another post-game conversation with our runner-up from Survivor 44. Please welcome in the Survivor player to make the fastest fire ever. And we'll get to talk for slightly longer than that today with Heidi Ligars Greenblatt. Heidi, how are you? Woo! Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Heidi, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's been fantastic. I'm back to my regular somewhat life or still trying to get back there, but getting there. And I'm I'm super excited to be here. I cannot wait to talk about everything that I haven't talked to. Yes, and we got to talk a little bit the day after the finale, but uh, we didn't have such a great connection that day. So I'm glad we're able to uh, catch up and get into uh, things. And now here we are about a month after the show. What have the last couple of weeks been like, Heidi? Um, it's been great. It's been great. So a little bit of traveling for me back to work. I've been at work for months now since the show and the filming. But after the finale, believe it or not, I'm still trying to recover from my voice. Everyone is like, what's happening with your voice? I'm like, not enough sleep and too much going on, but it's all positive. So nothing but grateful about the opportunity. And it's been fantastic. Okay. Well, Heidi, uh, let's talk about your game and, you know, I don't know if you get to talk about it too much on the show, but you are uh, a real old school Survivor fan, right? Oh, yes. But I didn't start from day one, unlike other people. I was a, I like to say I'm a latecomer, but I was so hooked from the get go. So I watch everything back. So I watch every every episode pretty much. Okay. Um, and what made you want to do Survivor at this particular point? <sighs> Great question. So... I love the show so, so freaking much. And at some point I started saying, I just gotta give it a try, okay? So when I turned 40, I made a bucket list and I said one of my items was going was actually to apply, not thinking I would ever make it on the show. But for me, it was okay, I'm gonna apply. So COVID happened and I didn't quite apply when I turned 40. But as soon as I heard that the show came back and they were casting again, I was like, okay, I'm in. And I applied for it and I was like, Check, bucket list item done without realizing that will call me a little bit after that. And then I made it on the show and it's it's been fantastic. Okay, well, let's talk about your adventure to Fiji here uh, in Survivor 44. Um, we didn't see, uh, you know, too many, uh, uh, you know, big strategic moments going on really uh, at the Soka tribe early on. Can you talk a little bit about like uh, how your game started and, you know, where you saw yourself in the Soka tribe? Yeah. So let me talk about that. I'll talk even before we started Soka. Coming into the game, my strategy, knowing I'm an engineer, I'm the I'm a mom, I'm the oldest female. So I always thought my strategy coming in was to be a little bit under and try to find a shield that will help me and complement me within the show, right? And I always talk about trying to find the opposite person of me. So when I saw Danny Massa, um, who was at Soka, first thing when I see him, I'm like, that guy's gonna be my shield, okay? So right away, uh, that was part of the strategy. However, I never expected to connect at a, a personal level with him the way I did. So we became friends within the craziness of the game. But we actually help each other within the game. And I think he helped, helped me propel my game all the way to the end. But Soka Live wasn't shown a lot on camera because we were winning. So it's, but I will tell you, that was probably some of my favorite moments happened at Soka because there's so much they didn't show, but it's still in my memory. We were running out of coconuts and I would never forget that the coconuts that were there were so high, so difficult to get. So we just came up with a plan. Um, how do we get the coconuts? And you can see all of us like climbing on each other, things like that. We hit someone with a the coconut. There, there's so many great memories about Soka. A little sad they didn't make it, but in all honesty, at the same time, grateful because that meant we were winning all the time. And and yeah, Soka was so fun. It's just they never showed it. Did you have somebody in mind that you were like thinking would be the first person out at Soka? Well, so instead of having a person in mind to go out, I do know my name came first. 
So when your game, your name comes first and you hear about it. Who's uh, saying your name, Heidi? Well, so speculations, right? But after the game, we talk too much. Um, I do know. Oh, I won't say who said my name, but it was probably. Why not? Why not? Is it a secret? No, it's not a secret. I think it was a, a group scenario, probably Josh saying my name for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, once you hear your name coming up, you, you, you game is on, right? Yeah. Like you're like trying to get each other and trying to connect. And you're like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm playing this game. Let's go. So yeah, when my name came first, then it's like, okay, how do you, how to utilize the strategy and the friendships and the little connections that you have to propel the game. And in all honesty, that, so I said it was Josh that carries carried with him all the way until he went home because in my head I was like mm -hmm. like you know he put my name first sorry yeah. but not sorry right so we were both playing the game okay well then Josh is on the chopping block seemingly when you all go to that first tribal council that the only time that Soka goes to the tribal council and you oh. wanted to go and uh vote for Claire in that spot uh, if you if Josh had said your name, uh, why not uh, give more consideration to voting out Josh? So, so here here is what happened there. Um, Josh mentioning my name and I could see Josh trying to make a connection with Matt Blankenship. OK, in some ways they were like trying to walk with each other. They go to like the, the ocean together. So I started telling Franny, which, by the way, it wasn't a lie. I could see it happening, but I was like. Franny. Oh, let me back up. Franny and Matt being together was so obvious from the get-go, okay? I yeah. think we see it coming when they didn't see it coming, okay? So we knew that was undeniable connection there. So, of course, when I start seeing Josh trying to connect with Matt, I will point it out to Franny, like, look at them. Josh is really trying to take Matt from you, right? So I started putting that seat there yes. with her, and it carries the whole way until the fake merge, right? So well, it came down to strength, right? So between Claire and Josh, Claire wanted to sit out pretty much every challenge that we had. Um, so we really just, you know, nothing we could do. It, at that point, it's like we're winning. We want to keep winning. So we all make it to the merch. So when it came down to voting someone out, we kept Josh purely on the strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then after Claire goes home, then you are going to get a new visitor at the Soka tribe. Uh, and we didn't really see too much about where Jamie fit into everything. Can you talk a little bit about how Soka changed when Jamie came? So that was a huge surprise when we are actually by the beach and waiting. And when we see the boat, we're like, wait, that is not Josh. That is, who is that? And then we saw it was Jamie. And I, I, in all honesty, it was an opportunity for us to gain information from a different tribe. Because at that point, we talk to everyone at the challenges as much as you possibly can, which means you don't talk a whole lot with them because you're on the challenges. Um, but so that was an opportunity for us to kind of gain information and trying to connect outside of Soka. Um, I was excited. Like she looked super bubbly from the get go. She was very smiley. And when she got there, the part that is interesting with Jamie and I is I connected a lot with Jamie on a personal level. Um, we had moments um, cleaning the fish and eating the fish. We had really positive, strong moments that connected the two of us. And we are really good friends now because of that but we never played together. It's so interesting now that we know the out outcome of the whole game. We never got to play together. And there are moments later on at the merch, and I'm sure we'll talk about that, that people are like, why didn't you play with Jamie and Lauren? Well, guess what? I tried. And when we talk about that, I'll give you details. I tried. It just wasn't there. The connection wasn't there later on. Okay. So, all right. Uh, you said that Jamie told you things. What? Anything interesting that you learned from no. Jamie? Yeah, so she came and told us nothing about Ratu. Okay. Nothing. In fact, she may have like covered and lied a little bit to um to really like be so uh, Ratu strong. So when we merge and we start talking, then we're like, she's Ratu strong, definitely not playing with Soka at all. So when we merge, it was very evident by the things that she didn't tell us or that she told us that was covering up for Ratu that she was Ratu strong even when she was at Soka. Okay. And where did you think the idols were at Soka? Ah, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but I'll say mm -hmm. it. 
Um, so when when Danny finds the key for the cage, I saw him from the distance. And I didn't see the key or the idol or anything like that. I just saw him celebrating. So I was like, and I and I talk about this in my confessionals that they didn't show, but I'll you know, I talk about it like I just saw Danny finding something. I don't know what it is, but nobody's gonna be like dancing and like for no reason on their own literally just walking around right so i i had a, an incline but i also said that i'm not gonna like really said anything say anything because i don't mean to burn it unless i need to so it's just information that i could utilize to my benefit whether it was to tell people he has it or maybe to utilize as a team which is what we did later on okay so, so it was it was closed uh, not quite close but it was hidden i think that was the only one that I know that was quite well hidden. And then he hit the fake one for uh, Matt to find. That was a whole deal. And did you on. hear anything about that? Matt had the fake one. So there was, yeah. So Matt told us that he found it. Um, and then like, it was so interesting because the way it happened when they told us how it happened. So Matt found it and tried to, you know, cover it up. But apparently Danny was like, you find you found something. Show me. And I think he told he had to come out clean because Danny kind of saw it, although it was because it was planted yeah. there. So when Josh came, Danny kind of said, Matt just found it. Um, so it became a thing how just Danny told Josh about it. And it's like, why would he do it that way? And obviously, once 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 we knew it was fake, it all clicked, right? But it, we didn't know this as a fact all the way until the merch the only one who truly knew it was a fake was danny and it carried with uh matt all the way to the merch and even when matt went home he that he left his bag behind he still thought it could be it could not like it was always a little bit of a question mark for him even though we all found out at merch what was happening okay well let's talk about the mergatory and now where things are starting to get a little crazy you're part of the group uh, that is going to be vulnerable at that first vote. You're one of the six. So uh, I, can you just talk a little bit about uh, what your thoughts were coming into the merge? So for me, and I said that I was trying to be under, I was, and I tried to be that. And then I build those relationships with the SOCAM members pre-merge. When we hit the beach at merch, I will never forget Franny saying, oh my God, what happened to you? Like, you're like so talkative and loud and bubbly. I'm like, yeah, this is where the game takes it to the next level, right? So for me, it was like, okay, I have to get out of my shell, right? I have to make as many connections as I possibly can. And I have to get to know people outside of Soka, right? So when you hit, it's chaotic though. And I'm sure you know this, like you go from having you know, just sex to all of a sudden you have so many people and it's just running wow. around too many conversations. It's craziness. And I feel like you never understand that until you're there. Um, but yeah, you try to, and, and we talk about this, like Danny and I, perhaps like, let's try to like not be together. Okay. Let's not show our cards that we're, you know, allies here on, on you know, Matt and Franny kind of told everyone about it. But we try our best to like, okay, we're gonna break and let's just find different partners so then we can get together and help each other. So, so that's kind of that was kind of our plan getting into the merch. Heidi, what did Matt and Franny tell everybody about how close Soka was? Well, so I, I don't know if it was, and maybe this is a question for them, but I don't know if it was because they were a duo. So they tried that they, they told people that Danny and I were a duo kind mm -hmm. of thing, an allies, right? Yeah. And I think it became evident later on. Okay. Um, but I think, yeah, they started spilling the beans that we were close, close friends within the game. So just going back to that a little bit. So we saw in the episode before Josh gets swapped, it seems like that there is a conversation between you and Danny and Matt and Franny. And you're saying like, okay, it's us. It's us for Josh is going to be the next person out. First off, was that a genuine conversation that was legit to Matt and Franny after Claire went home? Yeah, I think it. the part with Josh that was so difficult is, Josh never told us about who he was, right? Yeah. So connecting, and we are, let me let me back up there for a second because Josh, when he gave us the, this elaborate story about who he was, I was like, he's lying, okay? And nobody believed me, so I was like, okay, I'm dropping it because nobody's believing the lie. Oh, everyone's believing the lie except me, so I don't want to be that person. Um, 
But in general, I think because he kept with that lie, it was really hard to connect with him on a personal level at the game. He's a fantastic person now that I know no him doubt. well. But but in, within the game, we had a hard time connecting. So, of course, he goes to Tika, and we don't know what's going to happen at Tika, right? So it was hard to kind of trust what was going to happen with him. Is he going to stay so strong? Is it not? So it was really hard, and I had already put seats into Franny that he was going, you know, trying to break Franny and Matt. So of course we had to stick with it. And it was, I think it was authentic and it happened actually. So yeah, I think it was legit. Okay. One other question about this. So I believe you all at Soka picked who got to go on the swap that went to, that sent everybody to the other tribes. Why did you pick Josh to send him to uh, the, on the journey, on the trek? At that point, we didn't know uh, that they were not going to come back. Sure. Right? We selected people without knowing, okay, this is a swap. Maybe we should have known, but we didn't. But he could have so, gotten an idol. Yeah. So, but, it, but, but from Danny's perspective and my perspective, he was the one man out, right? Matt and Franny and then Danny and I, and he was like, okay, let's send him with the no, with that realization, at least from Danny and I, that he could still be an ally if he came back. Right, because he was the middleman there, and it just happened. It wasn't super strategic. It was more like he's the one man out. Let's send him out. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's it. Was a quick decision on the spot too. Okay. So can you just uh, talk about then? Um, we we have this first vote, um, and that there is talk about Josh, and ultimately we're gonna see Soka wanting to uh, vote out one of your own here on Josh. A lot of people, I think, were wondering at the time, well, if Josh is loyal to Soka, why get rid of Josh? We couldn't tell if he was loyal to Soka. I think that's that was the part that was... Now, hindsight now, maybe we should have kept him, knowing I don't think I saw the Ratu-Soka battle at that time. I saw it right after that. Um, but at that time, we I didn't quite see it coming. And we have numbers still with the four of us. So I think it was like, okay, he's dispensable. But obviously hindsight maybe could have could have changed the outcome of everything if we would have kept him. Yeah, I mean, you certainly could have used his number uh, moving forward. And he was like the one person who uh, had an issue with Jam Jam. Now, I know that you talked well, about- We didn't know that though. Yeah. Um, so, all right. But Soka and Ratu like starts off like working together well. I remember in the episode you're like talking to Lauren and Danny and Brandon. Obviously had that good conversation when they went on the trek. Did it start off a, at the beginning of the merge as like maybe like Soka and Ratu working together more? I don't. I don't. So couple things, and I'm gonna f fast forward a little bit so we can connect the dots here. But flashback. So when we got to the merch, I talked about how, like, Jamie, we can tell right away she was Ratu strong, right? So that was evident, okay, they have something strong here. But it wasn't quite an insight they were going to be that strong. So when I got the advantage, and we can dive right into that, because that Josh was already gone for that point. So I just told you with Josh, we didn't quite see it 100% that clear in the game, but it became clear when Matt Blankenship went home. So some people may, and at the time I was like, this is an advantage, that's a disadvantage for me because he's in the open. Everyone knows I have this, right? So Matt was there. Um, they We had the challenge and I found the advantage. So the winning people, they, they split us into the winning people got um, the peanut butter and jelly and I got the advantage. We and luckily, you didn't get sick like Carson. I know. Oh, it was delicious. I, listen, I don't even like peanut butter that much in terms of a sandwich. I like peanut butter, but not peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. It was glorious. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, beside the point, um, I find the advantage, which by the way, that was probably one of the funnest challenges. We were running like- Opening keys. the keys. Like, How many keys did you have to try? Too many. Too many. I prop myself, I probably try- eight ten i don't wow. even know we were running like sprinting like crazy and that was in the at the camp and yeah when i opened i was like yes and I, as soon as i read it i'm like oh my god i can save matt right so that's the first thing that comes to mind but then as you start doing the numbers and then you realize oh yeah they're not gonna come back so we don't get to strategize with them oh this is not gonna work so while I thought for a moment it was a disadvantage it actually worked for my game it was a good turning point 
because I got a lot of information and information that I could utilize to pretty much propel all the way to the end, right? So a couple of things that happened. I talked to everyone behind because at first I said, let me read it um, and like figure this out by myself. And then if I, depending on what it is, I will share it or not. Because I wasn't sure what it was going to be. So when I saw what it was that I get to actually um, control a vote from someone that was there at risk um, and they have to do whatever I say they have to do, I was like, okay, I, I it's going to be evident, okay? Everyone's going to see what it is. Let me talk to everyone and make sure. I knew I was going to have to do some damage control, right? Whether it was Ratu, Soka, or uh, Tika. So I talked to everyone. Here are the, the key parts that I gather, okay? I hear uh, um, Franny saying, Matt may have the numbers because he became really close to Brandon. And he, she thought that Brandon could vote with Matt. But I was like, wait a second, what? So what that tells me, though, is that she, her and Matt are trying to break from Soka, okay? Because it's like for, for it's her- only two days. How close I can know. he get? For, for her to think that He's Brandon- He's a charming guy, but come on. But That's exactly right. But for her to say that Brandon's going to vote with Matt and go against Lauren and Jamie, I was like, no freaking way, right? But at least I can tell, okay, you read within the insights there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I told her, Give me a plan. How to save Matt? Like, what do you want me to do? I gave her that opportunity. And of course, we had nothing, nothing. At least at the time, she didn't give me anything. And I told her what I was going to do, which was like taking Lawrence to put it on jam to give a fighting chance to Matt. Because if he had truly Brandon, then he gets saved. But I was it was a chance purely on what she told me. I knew, I feel like I knew better than that. And I probably, she knew better than that too, but I don't know why she would have, get to, you know, would have told me that. Um, the other thing which comes later is Kane didn't really talk that much with me. And my connections with Kane was really through Jamie because I connected with Jamie and Soka. And that later on, um, when Kane goes home and they showed this in the, in the show where I'm like, oh, he's the big guy. He's the next big, big guy. But to put into perspective, I, I'm saying that to small people like I am. So, so saying that he's a big guy means something when you're small, okay? Because uh, so many people is like, are you going against the big guys? Well, not really. But we'll talk about that after this. So going to the advantage. Anyway, so I take, I talk with everyone. I put the vote. I take control the vote from Lauren. We all know Lauren has the extra one, by the way. Yes. So I control the vote from Lauren. And I put it on jam and I'm given a fighting chance if Brandon is truly going to vote with Matt, that they could get safe. Right. Um, why did I do that? Because so many people are like, you should have put Ratu and Ratu and all of that. I wasn't going to kill my game. OK, so yeah. just to save Matt. And let's say I do put Ratu and Ratu. I'm, I'm banking that Jam Jam is going with Matt on this you know blindly mm -hmm. i don't know jam jam okay at that point you kind of know him but i don't really know him so it would have been blind let's say that jam jam does that right then it's a tie and jam jam has been coming from being at the bottom so in my head i was like if it's a tie jam jam is the one gonna be the one flipping and guess what i just ruined my game because i'm making too many enemies and matt still goes home right so yeah. That's what, what was going on in my head, and that's why I made the moves that I that I made. Okay, well, thank you for exp uh, walking us through that. That is uh, a different interpretation than I had had. Um, uh, it had been my impression, and I don't know um, how many other people uh, thought this way that you were uh, you put the vote onto Jam Jam to try to ensure that the Ratu people voted out Matt in that spot. That no. in, okay, I had thought that you were trying to split up Matt and Franny so that you could pick up Franny. No, no, I mean, I wish that was, I knew the chances for Matt to stay with what I did was minimal, right? Mm -hmm. But based on the information Franny had given me, I was giving him a fighting chance and trying to not break my game coming up, mm -hmm. right? Like the, the yeah. I was making the least amount of waves, but the good part was that I got the information. Now, some people have asked me, could you have not played it? And I think the answer is probably, but guess what? I was going to play it. Whether it was an advantage or disadvantage, 
I was going to deal with the consequences. I'm playing the game. I think if I would have not played it, people would have said like, oh, you're too scared. You're not playing this game. I was going to play it and just deal with the consequences. So I knew I had to like, you know, do damage control with Jam Jam later on, which yeah. I did. Tell me about some of those consequences. Like what kind of damage control did you have to do? Um, so, well, I'll talk, I'll dive right in. Um, when Danny was playing the idol for Franny, cause so many people, um, are like, why did you tell Jam Jam? Okay. You have to understand a couple of things. Danny told me he told Carson. Okay. And I knew from a mile away, Carson and Jam Jam were close, right? They were, they were Tika, um, members. Right. So for me, I was like, I have to tell Jam Jam before Carson tells him. Even though Danny doesn't like, he's not going to yeah, like that. Yeah. But I knew it was just going to help me to make, um, you know, just damage the control. And Jam knew that, but I knew that too. So it was just fair. So, and they show me kind of going into the water well when they're talking about to start talking. Because as soon as they started going, I was like, I'm going after them because I have to tell Jam Jam first. So, um, and I'm like, are you sure you, I can come in? And they're like, oh yeah. So that's when I tell him and I make it look like I don't know what's happening, but of course that's damage control with the knowledge that I know Carson is going to tell Jam Jam. Let's be honest here. Right. right. Um, so um, now a lot of people have asked, like, did you know he was going to, they were going to vote for, uh, uh, you know, with Ratu and make them, cause that was a pivotal moment for their games. Cause they, it looked like they were Ratu strong, even though they knew the idol was coming. I knew and Jam talked about this in his deep dive. I knew, right? But for me, it was like, okay, this is a huge test. And he told me he was going to do this, okay? If he actually sticks with that and doesn't blow the idol for us, maybe there's some trust there. This is the moment where I know, do I trust him or do I not trust him? Um, so it's super important, though, because they, Jam talks about how this is very important for his game. It's very important for my game because that right there solidified me working with Tika, even though the Ratu people never saw it coming. Even all the way until the end, Jamie and Laura never knew that I actually had a relationship with Jam, which speaks to his game mm -hmm. too, right? Um, but they thought they just had Jam and Carson to their own. And it's like, well, we just have a secret thing that we cannot be too loud because the two Puerto Ricans can be seen as a duo also. So for us, our connection was very, very much like we have to you know, keep our distance big time. But that moment right there is what also lets me infiltrate in between the Soka and the Ratu because from the advantage, I could tell the Ratu Soka with all the information I got, I could see the battle is coming. And it's like, the battle is coming. How am I going to get in the middle with everyone else? With the Tika three, perhaps. How do right. I get in the middle with them? And that is super important for what's coming in my game, which is why okay. I ended up being in the middle. Okay, yeah. Um, so much interesting stuff there, Heidi. So I think a lot of people were saying about like, well, why would Heidi tell them about the other? That, that made them less likely to want to vote with uh, Soka on that vote if they know they're going to play the idol. So, uh, you know, that, that does help make some sense from what we'd seen during the show. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I got a lot of backlash on that one, but get, trust me, I, it was intentional. And even if I made it look like it wasn't, cause I told Danny, like maybe it was a mistake and but maybe not. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was important for me. And I, I truly think that was super important. Okay. Um, the, one that I was talking, the one I was talking earlier was the Kane one. Yeah. Because when Kane actually, yeah, um, when Kane went home, that was a moment where nobody wanted to say a name at all. And I talk about how I was talking to Kane through Jamie. And when I told Jamie, Kane doesn't even talk to me. And that's when Kane, I could see a flip right away. Like, oh, let's talk. And he started trying. But at that point, I knew if it's going to be a Ratu Soka battle, let's get the Ratu that talks to me the least, okay? And I know other people claim they have this, but I was the first one to say Kane's name. Kane, I'm sorry, I love you too now. Um, but at the time, it was, for me, it was like, I'm going to throw the name that of the guy that doesn't want to work with me. Kane, it is. He's the big dude. Why not? But it wasn't, it had nothing to do with size. It was more like we never connected to any level at, at all in the merch. Yes. That's why Kane went home. 
Okay, yeah. So, all right, Kane goes home uh, after Brandon, and on this vote, it seems like that the Tika uh, are working with Soka. Did you have in your mind like what you wanted your final three to be from this far out? Yeah, um, it's very interesting because very early in the merge, when I met um, Carolyn and Jam, and I was always the one that would wake up first, okay? So if you go do Survivor in the future, wake up first because that's when you get into every conversation or you go and look for idols. But um, Jam would always uh, come right after me. And I think he was playing the game like just like I was. So we would always have conversations and Carly joined. And I tell them, and I we had a conversation. I said, wouldn't it be interesting if the three of us go to the end because all of these people are going to outspeak us. Everyone was so eloquent. And I was like, Jam, you and I have accents. Carolyn, you know, it's like playing her own game kind of thing, right? Of being wild or whatever. So it was never like, let's go to final three together and make an alliance. It was more like, I think we have a better chance, the three of us against each other. And it happened that way, but it wasn't really like, let's make a final three or anything like that. It was more like, I think we have the best chance against each other. And I was, that was maybe like day three of March. So yeah, yeah, that was the only time I talk about final three, because for me, it was a little bit one step at a time. That was the only time I talked about the final three. What about Danny? Was Danny somebody that you thought about going to the end with, or you didn't, that wasn't part of your plan? Uh, It was not part of my plan. Um, now, hindsight, maybe it should have been because, like, he had the, this beef with Carolyn or whatever in the game. But my plan the whole way was to utilize him as a shield. And at some point, I, I had to let him go. And by the way, when I put his name down, which so many people are like, why would you do that? Like, that was so silly. Well, guess what? I put his name down because I needed to show everyone else that I'm willing to to, to put his name down, that I'm willing to wo- vote for him. Yeah. So that was a message for everyone else, knowing that he wasn't going to go home that time, okay? Yeah. I had to lie my way around that one big time because I didn't want to break the relationship with him, but it was more of a message for everyone else. And to that point, Rob, this is super important. Carson in the tri- final tribal council start, starts talking about how, you know, Making the right votes, it's super important to being on the right side of the vote. I want to utilize two examples in 44. I played for Danny very much on purpose, knowing that he wasn't going to go home. That was Franny with the little E for all the 44 people. There's a joke behind that because I I lie my way around writing Franny with the little E pretty much all the way until the end. Um, and then when Carson and uh, Jam uh voted for brandon when um when brandon went home right uh he voted for franny when brandon went home that's when um towards the beginning right when they decided that whole thing that i told them about the idol right they voted wrong on purpose voting wrong is not always bad it could work very much to your strategy so i know carson at the end was like oh this person the right vote da, 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 da. Well, yeah, but you know what? There's sometimes you play the wrong vote because it won't works for your strategy. They did it. I did it, right? So yeah. anyway, to your question, yes, um, I I needed to show everyone that Danny, I could vote for him because I felt like if I wanted to show and explain my game at the end, I needed to get fr- uh, Danny in the jury so he could explain everything I did to everyone else because he knew my game better than anybody out there. Okay. Yeah, well, let's just back up a little bit onto this uh, vote of uh, Franny with the little E. Okay, so <laughs> did you? It seems like that this a lot of this decision seemed to take place while you were at the reward uh, with Carolyn uh, and, and Lauren and Franny. And so, would that have been your first choice to vote out Franny, or did you want to go in a different direction when we are at this point at the final eight? This is a great question because so. I did connect with Franny and I know he, she was not highly strong, right? Like I knew she wasn't going to be my number one. I wasn't going to be her number one, but I wasn't ready to let Franny go at that time. And I know she had a strong challenge game. Um, I was totally okay with keeping Franny, which is why I was okay with voting for Danny. I thought her and Carolyn were going to vote for Danny and they ended up flipping very much at the end um voting for me yeah. and I, at the end i was like well girl i'm sorry that's what happens when you vote for me you go home too <laughs> um 
But, You're like Jam Jam. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, it was like one of those where it's like, I'm really sad, but you know what? You voted for me. Go home. Totally okay. Um, yeah, so I was supposed to, Danny, I'm sorry, Franny and Carolyn were supposed to vote for Danny as well. So it wasn't meant to be a one person vote. But you, but I didn't know what was happening because as soon as I got to the island after the reward, and they show this, Danny, first thing he says is like, we're voting for Franny. I don't need your number, right? So in my head, I was like, well, if you don't need your number, I got to do something here to propel my game. So yeah. even though I knew it was coming and I could have voted with them, I was like, okay, how can I use this moment to show that I'm breaking from Danny? And that's how I ended up voting for him. For him. Um, I just didn't know Carolyn and Franny were going to end up voting for me. But hey, mm -hmm. Franny went home that day, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it seemed like that the switch actually came that it seemed like it was Lauren's idea of like, hey, why don't that? It seems like let's vote for Heidi. I listen, she didn't vote for me. It was mm -hmm. Carolyn and, and Franny. Mm -hmm. So even if the flip was from her, I know they tried. Franny and Jamie tried really hard. But guess what? I I, I lasted them. So that's OK. It's part <laughs> of the game. It's part of okay. the game. All right. So. Um, after this vote happens, then there's some confusion about who voted for Heidi. Uh, sorry, who voted for Danny? For Danny. For Danny. Now, um, this is interesting because uh, you're saying that it was very important for you to let people know that you were the vote for Danny, but then also you denied it vehemently. Yeah. So it's so. This is so interesting because Danny didn't believe them like every person there including me of course knew i voted for danny every single person and danny literally never believed them never and f f to him and we talk about this all the time right to him it was like it's not logical like why would heidi vote for me it doesn't make any sense that's like crazy strategy but of course you have to see it from my side of the things where it's like it's, I knew he wasn't going home. It's like, how do I tell people I'm willing to work with you all and vote him out too? So use me for your numbers. Once again, it's like, how do I stay in the middle to try to keep surviving? And I think he never saw it coming. So I lied, right? I even told him like, Danny, they're really trying to break us. Do you really believe I voted for you? That's totally damn. He may have been Franny maybe because you they had a little bit of a battle going on. Um, and it wasn't a battle. It was more like, I think Franny thought, oh, yeah, um, I think Danny's gunning for me and because I'm winning more challenges than he is. And like, I could see this, like, they're not like gelling together in some capacity. So anyway, um, I yeah, I just lied my way out of it. And he never believed anybody. Never. At no point he believed anybody but me. So that was, that's, that talks about our alliance was really, really strong. Yeah. Okay. Heidi, so... At the next vote, now, Danny is going to go home, uh, but you're going to go back to working with Danny at the final seven. So uh, can you just talk us through what, like, what you were hoping to see happen there? Um, When Danny's going home? When Danny's going to go home on that vote. Carolyn's going to play her idol. Yeah, so when Danny and I try so hard with Lauren um, and Jamie, because... Our pitch to them was, okay, if we vote Carson out, we wanted, at the time, we thought Carson had the strongest game because Carson was winning some challenges. Everyone loved Carson. We can tell from a mile away that Caroline thought Carson was her son. Um, so we knew all the connections there, right? And for us, we're like, okay, he has the strongest game. He has to go. Hey, Jamie and Lauren, if we vote him out, it will be a 2-2-2. Two, two, two two Ratu, two Tikas, two Sokas, and they just didn't go with it. And it didn't, it was, it was not going to matter because Carolyn played her idol. Her idol didn't quite matter at the time because they, the, the Ratu girls ended up voting with them. But that was a super important moment. And for them not going with us tells me, okay, these girls do not want to play with me, which is why Danny goes home and I get the opportunity to still play. Um, that was sad. That was probably my lowest moment when my ally left. I'm not going to lie. That was hard. Um, but yeah, but I was like, I'm here to win the game. So I'm not here for Danny's game. I was here for, the, I was there for me and I just kept playing hard and I still had a blast after that. So, yeah. 
All right. Well, I think that at the final six, this is uh, another round that uh, people have a lot of questions for you. And we, you know, you got to talk about this a little bit after the finale. But so Lauren and Jamie had just written your name down at the final six. But, but there's also an opportunity potentially to, you know, uh, at least tie the Tika three. And so there was uh, that opportunity. You've also, uh, we didn't uh, talk about this, but you also have a hidden immunity idol at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Um, at that po at that point, they never saw that I actually had a relationship with the Tika people as well. Not that it was like strong allies, nothing like that, but I had my way in. I was the last standing Soka for a reason, right? Um, they tell me, they try to pitch me to work with them but they pitched me Carolyn. And I, in my in my eyes, I was like, why Carolyn? I knew Jamie was getting close to Jam and I knew Lauren was getting close to Carson. In my head, I'm like, if I vote with them, with Carolyn, sending Carolyn home, I'll be the one next, right? So for me, it just didn't make sense. I feel like if they would have pitched me, Jam or Carson, I would have been 100% on board. Let's do it because that means, okay, we can really work together. So when I try even to mention it, I also don't pitch it too hard on them because I don't want to like to, for them to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then give me some BS. It was really hard for me to trust them. They kept putting my name over and over. My name kept coming up and I knew 100% it was the both of them. Right. Um, so for them to pitch me, Carolyn just didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. I make a choice to go with the Tika rather than going with her, with them knowing that I could still try my best to get my way in with the, with the Tika three. Yeah. Did you pitch them about voting out Carson potentially in that spot? So I try, no? I try softly. I try both. Like I try either Carson or um, jam, but it, I didn't try hard enough. I'm not going to lie because I also was not trusting them. So I was very careful. Like if I try too hard, they may just go with me and say something and mm -hmm. do something else. So it be, it just, it was a little bit of a trust issue, right? Um, I, it, it was, it could have been a pivotal moment, but they has also just betrayed me with the previous one with Danny, which is why Danny went home. They didn't go with us. It's like, why Carson now and not before like that? I just couldn't trust them in the game. They never played with me at all in the game. And I just couldn't trust them. Did anybody know you had an idol? Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Not, not that I know. I, I don't think anybody saw me. Um, I actually had so many, so many criticisms about the idol. Let's talk about it. Because when my name keeps coming up, so many people in social media, family, friends, they're like, you must play it. Why didn't you play it? But like, survive. I didn't have to play it. So I'm good. Like, right. And then like, why well, again, you, your name kept coming up. Why didn't you play it? I didn't have to. I survived. Why? And then I play it. It's like, why did you play it? So it's like, make up your mind. Come on now. No, but I actually, I had it. And for anybody who has an idol or has had an idol, you must know it burns it burns in your pocket. You're like, I don't want to go home with it. Right. So it's like, okay, how do I utilize it as a strategy, as a strategy? So at the end I could say like, Hey, I play my idol well, whatever. Right. Which I wanted to, but I knew at that, at that point, I didn't really quite needed to use it. Cause I, I, I was safe, even though you're never feeling safe. But when I use it, I was like, I'm going to utilize it now because I want to make it to the last beach. And you always know that when you play an idol, it may come back. So I knew that not to play it earlier and then someone else may grab it instead of me. So mm -hmm. at that time, I made peace with myself that I was going to play it even if my name didn't come up. But the, what they didn't show is my name did come up. My, I, my name was very much out there. All the, the non tika names were out there 100%. It just happened they didn't vote that way at the end. But my name was out there too. I just made peace with myself with, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it to final five, which is making the final episode. We were confident that we were moving to another island. And I was like, I'm going to try to find it myself. And I, even if I find it or not, I'm going to keep fighting to try to make it to the top three. And it happened that way. Hey, people were thinking that maybe you had already found an idol and that you were going to play two in a row. Yeah. No, I wish. We looked mm -hmm. so hard. We didn't know. 
there was an advantage or an idol in that last beach until there were airing it, or maybe Jeff said it in his podcast or something like that. I think we saw it in the episode. Oh, we saw it in the tree. That's right. Yeah. That's what it was. So we looked so hard, like all five of us, okay? Because we all knew when an idol is playing, typically something comes back. And yeah, we all looked so hard. So we never knew, like, at some point, we're like, okay, did Lauren find it or not or whatever? But no, we, we were all like pretty sure nobody found it. And I cannot yeah. believe there, it was in the tree. We looked so many times there. So at this point, are you already sort of like planning this out about how like, okay, well, I this is six. I want to go to the end with Carolyn and with Jam Jam. And Carson is still out there. But I know I've got the ace in the hole that I can make the fire. And so... Uh, I'll, I'll make the, I, I can make the fire and then take Carson out. Like, have, are you already thinking about these things? No, no. One step up. I feel like while you want to make it to final three, I knew I was against three Tikas. Like it was going to be really hard. And actually even before that, cause Lauren won the previous challenge before she actually went home the previous one. Right. Yeah. At that time, I was like, I must win this. And when I didn't win, I was like, oh, my game is over. But I have to keep trying. So when I was at the end with them, the whole fire situation, I know so many people are speculating, like, maybe she should have never announced it. She should have kept it as a surprise at the end. Wah, da, da, da. Guess what? It was very organic. I, when I said, when he said, you're guaranteeing final three or whatever, I'm like, like it just hit it was at that moment where i was like maybe not so it was very non i did not plan any of that and i also never in my life planned to really make fire i'm confident with the fire and you can tell that i, that I was confident with the fire but at no point i was sure of the fire until i actually said i'm gonna get you know give up my immunity to do it so yeah and, and fun fact about that day the day of sea motion I was not feeling well. So I uh, 24 something days in the island and I was totally fine. One day I have a fever is the day with Simotion, which I know is the biggest thing for me. They do it in a spectacular location and it's such an epic classic, right? We're all crying because th that's the only challenge with our names in the front. So you get to see it, see motion with Heidi and Carolyn and Carson and Jam. That was like, we were crying, okay? Um, but I was confident with see motion. I felt like I could put two, three more balls there and keep going. Wow. So even though I was sick, I was very much focused. Um, so the whole thing of the fire, never in a million years, I planned to say anything. It just came very natural. I was like dancing and celebrating. It just came out. So was not there planned. Any question for you once you had that opportunity that Carson was going to be the person? No. So, well, yes, I, I told them, give me a pitch. Like I have yeah. the power. Give me a pitch. Right. For the, oh, I think the first time in the entire game, I felt like the power is in my hands and it's such an important power at the end. Right. Um, nobody gave me a pitch. I was like, tell me you, you want to make fire? I let you make fire. Nobody gave me a pitch. So many people think I made fire against Carson because he didn't know how to make fire. I didn't know about any of the struggles with Carson. Although Jam kind of told me, he's like, Carson is having a hard time. I even had to help him out. And I'm like, he's telling me that to just, you know, to convince me one way or another. We were all faking it. So I would never forget making fire next to Carolyn. And I would like make fire and tap it, make fire and tap it. And she's like, oh, you're struggling too. And I'm like, oh, yes, girl, this is a struggle here, right? So I, we, all, <laughs> we all cover each other. Like, you don't want to yeah. show your cards in front of them. They did show a moment where the three of them are just like hanging by the fire. And here I am. And I'm like, fire. That was I, I didn't even remember that. But I love that moment for myself because I was confident with fire. Um, but it's hard to get that immunity necklace off your, your, you know, your neck. Yeah it's that was that's probably the hardest thing like not even the fire the taking the thing off and say i'm getting rid of my immunity to do this to risk it all for the biscuit right sure that was the hardest thing i i still can't believe i did that i'm proud i did because it gave me a good moment of course you should be now um you obviously know that you are uh, really good at making the fire. Was that something that you practiced specifically for Survivor? Or did you uh, just know how to do this from being an outdoors person? Listen, Carson, I love you. But if you're going to practice 20 billion puzzles, you must practice fire for Survivor. 
I don't care if you agree or disagree of the way the game is structured, because I know the, all of the criticisms, but you know that it could be your life in Survivor, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, if you're going to practice something, freaking practice fire, okay? So um, I'm obsessed with the show and any survival shows out there, but mostly survival, which is why I apply. So because I became so obsessed with it, my husband gave me, he gives me flint for like my birthdays and Christmas and things like that. Because like, you know, if one is like getting kind of old and I get a new one. So it just- And you like it, you're, ha you're happy. Oh my hey, God, I yeah. should have married a survivor that, that I could be giving flint for birthdays and anniversaries. Yes, yes. I love it. I, I get I get like bow oh and arrows God. and all kinds of survivor stuff. But the fire, when I knew that I started this process submitting and then they called me for the first time they called me, I was like, OK, I'm making one fire a day. I don't care. We, we can have lots of smarts. Um, so, yeah, every chance I had, I made fire. It doesn't matter if it was freezing snow out. I, I was still making fire. But it was more because I love it. It wasn't so much like I'm going to win fire. It's just like, this is something to know. Plus the puzzles, plus the challenges, plus not drinking coffee, all of that. Fire, you must practice it. Because whether or not you like it, it's part of the game. Okay. All right. So you did that. You're going to the final travel council with Carolyn and Jim. Jim, how are you feeling about your chances going into that final travel council? Um, I feel good. I knew it was going to be a tough battle. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I would never forget Carolyn and Jem telling me, oh, you have this in the bag. You just made fire. Did you see the jury jumping? And I'm like, I didn't see the jury jumping because I was very much in my zone. Right. Um, so I know, like, as part of the game, I was like, they're trying to make me feel comfortable. So I don't think about the things I want to say. Right. Um, I was I was talking a lot in the tribal council about my wife. I think it's I had a tough situation like. You know, Matt went home and I think Matt still thinks up until Matt, Matt Blankenship. I still think he thought I could save him with the advantage. So the way I played the advantage, I think he was not happy with me because he probably thought that I could have done more. Right. Put Ratu on Ratu, let him give him more a chance. And my point to him was like, well, Franny was telling me otherwise. So, yeah, I think it was tough. I think making fire with Carson and he's the last one coming into the jury didn't help either. Um, the only person that truly knew my game inside out was Danny. And even with that, he wasn't going to vote for me unless I did something very big, which is why I went against Carson because I thought he has the strongest game. And he says it in the show. You know, if you're going to um, take a hit on the king, you better not miss. And that's what I did. And for him, now I, I know that he voted for me very much because I made that move. Right. So, yeah. And guess what? Caroline? Jam and Carson had that cushion with each other the whole game. I was very much by myself. I tried. I thought I had a chance. I only got one vote, which was from Danny. I'm proud of the vote. I'm proud of the way I played. And I, Jam is a fantastic, fantastic winner. So I will never take that away from me. If it's going to be someone beating me, let it be Jam, my friend, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, one and two. So I, I we had a best, the best time. But bring, it, bring me back because I will be a different Heidi now with different strategies. Okay. What would you be different? <laughs> well, I would not be under the radar. I would very much be in front if mm -hmm. I if I go back. You know, is, is under the radar a double edged sword? Because you, yes, yes. You, yes. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So, so it's a little bit of finding a balance in the new era. Drop the zero, whatever he just said with the forties, right? Forty one. Yes. 42. Drop the four. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. So, you cannot be a flashy player. I don't care. I mean, you, you're flashy. You get all maybe the followers and you get camera time, but you don't win. So if you're in it to win it, in my opinion, right, I don't think I, I didn't want to be a flashy player because the flashy players go home. Um, so, so I think if I go back, I, I cannot have the same strategy. I just had to make it to the end. Right. So I will probably be a flashy player in my own way, even if they call me crazy Latina, but, um, but yeah, I think you cannot be flashy, but you also, I think in my case, I was under the radar. So kind of explaining the whys and the hows is really hard for people to connect. So it's like, how do you get out of the shell early enough and become a little bit flashy, but you have to pick at the right time. And listen, 
timing is everything, but it's also very hard because I truly think if I would have like been a little bit flashier earlier, I would have been gone home. Um, I may fire and I give myself the best chance. Um, maybe I should have done something a little bit earlier, but no, should have, could have. You know, I made it far. And I'm proud of that. And I, I plead my case and Jam had the, the better social game at the end. Yeah. Um, so many different parts of that in terms of like, you know, the perception of like, uh, you, you know, you talked about how um, you didn't want to be perceived certain ways by the audience or by uh, the players that that must be incredibly difficult to, you know, not just be playing the game, uh, but also be trying to, you know, play all these other factors. Yeah, especially so. I'm proud of our top six. So there's very diverse cast. And um, as a person, a female of color, I deal with this on a regular basis, right? We don't walk in shoes of privilege. We walk in shoes that we know how to manage so we can advance our careers, our lives, and just live a comfortable life. So I think, do I deal with that in Survivor outside the world? 100%, it's a macrocosm, right? So I think it's just part of being a female of color. I deal with this on a daily basis. And I always talk about this very loudly in my current job and in my life because I want opportunities to come for the younger generation. So yeah, I play the game pretty much with the strategy. I stuck with it and it worked out pretty. I didn't get the million, but I never got my um, fire snuff. So for all the females out there that look different and sound different, try and have your strategy and be confident and be yourself. Yes, don't worry about the craziness out there. You could do it. Uh, Heidi, um, great job on the season. Uh, second place, uh, not too shabby. And um, I mean, we, that we have a little bit of time left. Uh, is there anything else you want to make sure that people know about? Ah, uh, I wish. So listen, you asked me earlier about Soka, I wish they would have shown a little more of Soka. We were fun too, all of us, not just Frank and Ship. You had a fun um, secret scene, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a lot of fun um, throughout, like even at merch, even when I was at my lowest, I always talk about this, even when I was at my lowest, there's moments that got me out of the lowest and I had so much fun. So I'm so grateful for, grateful for the opportunity. Um, I hope there's other Heidi's coming later, maybe not necessarily, you know, name Heidi, but other people like me, whether you're young, not so young, um, you, you have an accent, whatever, give it a try. I think for everyone out there, I always tell them, you know, you never know until you try. And that's what happened to me. And it happened on the very first try. So it's been fantastic. I have lots of friends, new friends now. Um, and I'm again, grateful and thankful for everything. And I get to meet you too so thank you for having yes. me yeah uh, well the pleasure was mine uh i'm so happy that you had such a positive experience uh with this whole thing because this this could you know is could go any number of different ways and so i'm um, very happy to hear that it was a positive for you uh what's next for you heidi hi so i am back to my current job right well i've been in my job um i have two young girls and i'm happily married so having fun for me it's about you know just being happy trying to dream big and going for the dream so i tell you i have a lot of patterns a lot of traveling and things like that i'm gonna keep pushing the envelope and trying to go far my kids also are big dreamers they're two girls and they're big dreamers so i want them to also dream but i don't want to just be the mom i want to dream with them and just like push the limits and keep going follow me get me a cameo follow me on social media where where do we find you Heidi Lagares at Heidi Lagares everywhere. All the social media is the same name at Heidi Lagares. I dropped the green blood for that. Um, so yeah, keep Lagares. Drop the green blood. Yeah. Well, so yeah, for me it was like Heidi. I don't. I don't look like a green blood. So <laughs> Heidi Lagares, it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Heidi, thank you for talking us through all of this. Uh, this was really, really fun for me. So I appreciate you making the time. To do it, of course, uh, you can check out my conversation with uh, Jam Jam and Carolyn as well at robhasawebsite.com. And make sure you subscribe, robhasawebsite.com slash subscribe for everything we're doing here on RHAP. Thank you for listening. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.